Hi there. I want to share a story with you from my new book, which I'm holding in my hot little hands, all about the foundation of Tantra, which asks us to bring spirit into matter. It brings the divine into our everyday lives. And this is a very confusing idea because we tend to bring spiritual things and spiritual practices into our lives. And we think that's the same thing, but then we don't feel the magic and we don't have that tantric ecstasy that we're so seeking when we when we study tantra and I don't just mean sexual I mean in our day-to-day in our day-to-day lives in our relationships and everything because we're missing what it really means to integrate the divine into our physical lives so I want to read a story to you and it's about my dad When my dad was in his 20s, he drove tour buses through the Rocky Mountains in Western Canada. One day, he was driving his bus back to the garage with a few tourists on board. He was heading down a steep part of the mountain when he realized his brakes weren't working. These roads were right on the edge of the mountain. There was nowhere to go if something went wrong. He also knew that there was a bridge just around the next corner that was only wide enough for one vehicle. All the way down, he simply prayed that there was no one else on that bridge. But of course, when he got there, there was a bus on that bridge. It was halfway across and coming right for him. He had people on the bus and he had no way to stop. His mind went completely blank as he veered onto the bridge, heading straight towards the other bus. Suddenly, he found himself safely on the other side and the other bus was also safely on its side. The buses weren't damaged. There wasn't a scratch. And that bridge barely fit one bus. It wasn't possible. It just wasn't possible. He drove back to the garage in total disbelief. When he got there, the mechanics came running out to him. What happened on that bridge? The other driver just returned and he was white as a ghost. He couldn't even talk about it. To this day, my dad tells this story. My big, strong, 83-year-old dad tells this story And he cries every time because what happened, it's like it blew his circuits. Our rational mind can't make sense of this. How can a huge tour bus pass another tour bus on a bridge that only one bus can fit on at a time? It makes no sense. The challenge is in our life, we want to be rational. We want to make sense of things. We want to feel safe in a world that really we can't control. It's actually chaos. So our mind says, no, anything that's chaos, anything we can't understand, I'm going to just not think about. Or I'll just label it and I'll call it a miracle or I'll call it a fluke. I'll call it some weird, I don't know, and we'll make fun of it. We'll say maybe the stars were in funny alignment and that's just what it was. And then we get on with our day kind of pretending like it didn't happen. But The reality is this story actually happened. It's a real story. It's not the thoughts of someone who's delusional or on drugs or something. It's the thoughts of a sane man. This is a story that actually happened and it wasn't him alone. This is the world we really live in. We live in a world where infinity can happen all the time. Absolute miracles. We don't understand anything. We look at this body Osho used to say, you know, we look at things, we look at a tree and we go, wow, what a miracle the tree is. And he says, look at you. This is a miracle. Every, we don't understand anything that happens inside of us, right? We can observe it, we can label it, we can try to understand it, but we can't recreate it. We don't know how this actually works, right? We have theories, but we don't get it. And we've had experiences in our lives that we cannot explain. We've had feelings that we cannot explain. This, when you accept this, when you think back to the moments in your life that you couldn't explain, it could be miracles, it could be flukes, it could just be a simple moment that is so magnificent that it blows your circuits. Imagine integrating those feelings, those experiences into your everyday thoughts. That 
is integrating the divine into our lives. Imagine in the moments when you're so down and you're so lost and you're so confused. When we feel like that, when we feel like that, we are stuck in our minds. We are stuck in this physical world. We've lost that divine. We've lost the infinity. We've lost the reality of the miracle that we really are, that we don't understand. So in those down moments, in the lowest times of our lives, when we remember and we go, all right, everything I can see I don't understand, I don't like it, it's painful, I hate it, but there's more that I don't understand. I don't even understand why I'm here. I don't understand how I'm alive. I don't know why I look the way I look. I don't know why I have the people in my life, life that I have. I don't understand anything about how the world works at all. That's when we begin to be truly tantric. When we say, all right, I don't know, but I'm open to whatever's coming next. I'm open to infinite possibilities. To imagine that at this moment in time, you have no idea what's going to happen in the next moment, or in the next five minutes, or the next year, or the next ten years. To learn to live with that kind of unpredictability, to live with that kind of unknown, requires great faith. And it requires a deep connection to our own divine, whatever that is for you, whatever you call it. This is the path of Tantra. This is the foundation. We cannot skip this step. There is no such thing as secular Tantra where there is no where there is no spirit, there is no divinity, there is no infinity, there is no unknown, there is no mystery. Tantra is all about living in that mystery. We have a limited body, we live in a limited life. This is who I am, this is what I was given, this is the person, the persona I was given to play. But I'm playing in a world that is pure mystery, pure chaos, and blissful unknown. Because this is where we're truly alive. It isn't about aiming for the comfort zone. It's about finding that place where we feel fully alive when we're always walking around going, wow, even though I've walked down this street a thousand times, I don't actually know what's coming. That moment on the mountain when my dad was going down, he had no brakes, no chance. That, for all intents and purposes, I shouldn't even be here because my dad shouldn't have even survived that. Yet he did. A miracle happened and this is possible in every second of our day and this is the magic of